Hawk. Hawk. Once again, state that uh, OP trainings aren't necessarily fun. It's cold. What's going on, Gorilla Gang? So, today we are training LPs and OPs. So, first of all, um, a large section of this video is going to be very dry and very boring but so are LP OPs. So right off getting into it, LP, listening point, OP, observation point. This is part of reconnaissance and reconnaissance training. There are multiple manuals that have been written on this topic and everything surrounding this topic. So I'll throw up the timestamp on if you want to just get information out of this, but if you're looking at uh, doing the interactive training with us, we are going to have you guys set up in our OP watching what we're watching. Well, it's more of an overview of what we're watching. What I want you guys to do is sit down and take notes of everything that you see. So I'm going to have you guys taking notes. I'm going to have you guys doing a range card. If you want to get some free training, free training. this is the way to go about it. Another thing about OP LP training is it's relatively free. Another thing you have to take in consideration is the more fun things that you have with you, and by fun I mean, uh, you know, enjoyable things. Uh, yeah, throw that here. <laughs> the more things that you have to keep you warm, the more things that you have to keep you comfy, um, that just means the more things that you have to carry. Two shots of vodka. But as a uh, old Russian proverb was once said, there is no such thing as bad weather, uh, only a lack of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never heard that one? I, I heard the British one. Uh, that there's uh, no such thing as bad weather, there's bad gear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a uh, British. Yeah, I've heard the British one, not the Russian one. Yeah, the, Ru the Russian one's like, yeah, they would say that. There are a few scenarios of why this is actually important and why you should be training this. So first off, the power goes down. You don't have any comms with the outside world. And let's say that you want to either protect your neighborhood or you live a little, little bit out of town and you were wanting to go in town. Maybe the country's occupied. Very useful skill of honestly just being able to sit somewhere and observe. But let's say that you need to go into town. Maybe you guys need some supplies. You don't know if they're friendly, you don't know enemy, you don't know what's going on. So you hike into town under the cover of darkness and then you guys kick off and you set up a little patrol base. So you're gonna set up this little patrol base and you're going to sit and observe for maybe a few hours, maybe a few days. And you're just going to watch what is going on in that area. And you're gathering intel, you're taking down notes everything you see and then you're going to come back and you're going to report in with your command your command team very well might just be your elders um, the people that are are wise and knowledgeable and you know the, the more intellectual people whereas you know we're the younger military age males and we can move quickly through the cover of darkness whereas our elders are going to stay home they're going to take care of the homestead they're going to take care of the women the children etc etc your brains that are a part of your tribe part of your family you don't have to be the door kickers you're going in and you're gathering intel things that you need to bring with you or things that you need to take into consideration is do you have enough ammunition with you to bound back and get out of there if things go wrong um, do you have enough cold weather supplies? Wool. Pack. Wool. Wool good. Wool hat. Wool gloves. Wool socks. Wool. Do you have enough water? And if you think that just because you're a civilian, just because you haven't served in the military, that you can't do these tasks, you're wrong. 
you're absolutely wrong. Anyone can train this, anyone can get this information. Literally all you need is YouTube and look up some FMs, TMs, and there's all the information you need. Go out with your friends and practice this shit. But one huge thing with OP training is literally just mental strength. I'd say that's one of the biggest things is mental strength. Um, staying awake. Uh, a lot of people, and I've heard this quite a few times, a lot of people will say that uh, that staying awake and that OP training isn't, isn't actually training. Um, and I, I couldn't disagree more. Because honestly, this is, one of, this is one of the hardest things, in my opinion. Physical fitness is what it is, right? I, I can suck that up, I can power through it. Pain, whatever. Once guys start getting tired, once guys start getting sleepy, you're doing great. Who would want to live in a place like that? <laughs> Huck, you good? <laughs> That's where the real strength comes out. That's where you really start guys starting to fall. That's where you start see guys um, that their their intentiveness of being mission focused starts to dial back a lot because they're tired. A lot of men haven't been tired in their lives. A lot of men haven't been really sleep deprived in their lives, and it shows. You think that you're you're tired just because you have to go to your nine to five? <laughs> no. You think you're tired just because you have kids and your kids were up late? No, absolutely not. Uh, imagine going three, four days and you haven't slept at all. And the only sleep that you're actually getting is literally just you dozing off and that's it. Um, that's another huge thing that is helpful uh, when it comes to having multiple guys. You need to have sleep rotations. You need to have watch rotations. If you're a lone wolf, if it's just you, there's probably gonna be a lot of things that you wanna worry about before OPLPs if you're a lone wolf because you can't do it all alone. And it's not possible. You're, you're not gonna be doing an OP training by yourself because you, you gotta sleep eventually. It's just, it's, it's inevitable that you have to sleep eventually. If you guys want to do the interactive video, that's coming up next and take notes of everything you see. I'm going to give you left and right limits and then we're also going to go over how to do a range card. If you want to learn how to do a range card, it'll be at this timestamp and I will go over everything of how to make your own range card. If you have bought land nav kits from me, you have two waterproof range cards that are with you in that kit. like this.
Not only this, but if you are taking branches, if you are going to be taking foliage like ferns, leaves, what have you, you want to be taking this from behind your position. Now, I realize that you guys are sitting here and you are watching intently in this video, so if my voice is distracting here, I'm sorry, but I felt like this was probably the best opportunity to add in a little bit of extra information that we didn't originally get in this video. Another thing to take in consideration, and it's spoken about later in the video slightly, but I wouldn't mind getting into it a little bit more, is that when you are infilling and when you are exfilling out of your OPLP, you want to do your absolute best to try to leave as little trace of you as possible. Um, now, take into consideration that this isn't always going to be 100% feasible. Um, you're going to leave boot prints. You're, if you're digging in a position, you know, you're going to leave traces that you were there. It's more of while you're infilling to that location, um, you don't want to give away too much of your position, like let's say um, boot tracks in mud coming from a road leading to where you guys are. So just be cognizant of how you're infilling and try to be as smart as possible while doing that main thing that you want to take into consideration is just trying to be as concealed as possible trying to blend in so think smart also with this uh, anyone that's concerned about thermal detection uh, one thing is wool blankets and staying still wool is going to hold in your body heat we will do some more testing on this and hopefully be posting it in our poor night vision video so you guys will get a look on that as well we're going to be doing some testing with a few different methods but i'm gonna go ahead and shut the fuck up and let you guys get back to this absolutely thrilling OP.
Hey, what's going on guys? So you are here with our LPOP class portion. We are currently in our talk, our base of operations in the field. And then we will, this will be our resupply point. This is where we're gonna have admin. This is where we're gonna have uh, our mass, most of our comms, food. This is basically our resupply point out in the field. And it's actually goes along with the, uh, the poor theme, Costco carports. They're like 200 bucks. If you have a team of guys, um, thanks. Oh, I got water on you? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's I was just trying condens to Condensation. No, it's fine. Co condensation. It's, I don't care. You can train for longer in the field because you're not just under a poncho or a tarp. Not to say that we don't train like that because that is a good way to train. It's a majority of what we um, do, though. It is a majority <laughs> of what we do. But from here, then we can go out and we can do all of our OP training and we can come back here, reset, change socks, dry up, sleep on somewhere that's dry, caught, what that's have nice you. nice to have. It is, it's very nice to have. Uh, militaries since the dawn of time have brought canvas tents. Can I offer you this fine egg in these trying times? First off, as far as the class portion goes, LP, OP, what does it mean? So LP is a listening point, OP is an observation point. Uh, more often than not, they're going to be one in the same. Especially if you are a poor guy, especially if you're a civilian and you're operating with a, a few amount of guys like we've trained in the past. Limited manpower, limited supplies. Mm -hmm. You know, you're no longer funded by the United States Military Industrial Complex, right? You're 100% funded by yourself. I was always funded by myself. Fair. But going from being funded by the military to this is, uh, it's, wow. <laughs> kind of a culture shock. <laughs> well, you, you, you take it for granted, man. Yeah. You really, really do. Cause, uh, and you don't even realize once you get on the outside, it's like, oh, no one's paying for this anymore. Yeah. I can't just Everything. send up a requisition of, oh, I need this, this, and this. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is all coming out of my pocket. <laughs> I have to make the list and do I have my own to, budget. Even. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, this is a... Uh, Okay, I mean, yeah. we're still gonna we're still gonna make it work, but yeah. <laughs> oof. Uh, with this as well, I'm going to lightly touch on sniper hides, screen lines. We're gonna go over all those slightly. First off, I'll get into this. There are a couple manuals that I recommend that you purchase. Probably find these online for free. However, with prepping for shit hits the fan, I want to have hard copies. There is a reason that I have started accumulating a library because if the power goes out, if the grid goes down, and you no longer have your evil box to stare at all day. The evil um, box. You're gonna find yourself reading a hell of a lot more than you used to. I promise you that. Yeah. Turn off your power for 24 hours and you're gonna find out how bad your ADHD actually is. And uh, you're, you're gonna wind up reading again, right, right quick. So. Right off the bat, we have map reading and navigation. Before you get that one, I would get reconnaissance and surveillance handbook. Uh, this is one of my favorites, but that being said, I was reconnaissance in the military, so I think I might be biased on wanting to gravitate more towards this just because it's what I know and it's what I like to do. Um, next, we have the special forces handbook. <laughs> All right, so two of my favorite books. We have the Guerrilla Warfare Handbook and the Ranger Handbook. Uh, these two right here, um, probably this one specifically, this covers a lot of information. Uh, this is the 2017 edition. I honestly don't even know if there's a newer edition. There, there probably is. But yeah. that being said, uh, anything modern military is putting out, I don't really care about anyway. Unless it's drones. Uh, that shit is horrifying and, uh, and interesting to say the least. A couple of things to take in consideration when we're talking about this. Um, so we live in a mountainous environment. We are surrounded by forest here in the Pacific Northwest. So some of the information that I'm putting out, some of the things that I'm telling you guys are not going to be 100% applicable for your area of operations. Um, so you will have, when it comes to LPOPs, you have urban and rural, you have mountainous and desert, you have snow and you have green. And then you could probably go into God knows how many subcategories of that as well. Uh, once again, I would by no means 
say that I am a subject matter expert here. A lot of veterans aren't going to like that I'm saying this right now, but I would say that I've learned way more training with civilians and veterans than I did while in the military industrial complex. <laughs> okay, what was I talking about? Boobs. Okay, so. All right, so next up we're gonna go into range cards, uh, how to range cards. So I'm going to actually grab one. Are you fucking sick? No. God fucking. Hold on. I'll be right back. God, you. you get the fuck over here. No. No. You get the fuck. Anyway. We have new products coming out. The map backer. It's Velcro lined, so you can also put in your magazine inserts. We have these magazine inserts here you put in your map backer it has the hooks on this side loops inside of your map backer we also have tq wings here with a nice little pen holder and you could put all these dandy fine things together just like this i'm just showing the children how you can be Ready to go with the ODGG map backer and magazine pouches and, and the, the TQ wing holder. And I know it's upside down. Don't question it. I mean, that's, a, that's an option. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want your pen falling out. Going over range cards now. So what a range card is and the purpose of a range card is that wherever you're sitting in an OP, in a screen line, in a hide, what have you, wherever you're sitting, it's so that the next guy coming to relieve you is able to sit down and look at all the information here and be able to look at wherever you're observing and you have everything already marked of this is my left limit, this is my right limit, this is how far I can shoot, this is the distance to this rock. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set up different known points and you're going to name them. So if you were to have an enemy that approaches at this point, you can say that you have, you know, troops in the open, 300 meters, because you already know the distance, you've already done all this, and the next guy can give proper intel about where the enemy is, what's going on, what have you. So normally what you're going to do, once you uh, fill out a range card, is you're gonna do two. So one of those is going to stay at that point and the other one's going to go to your command team. So that way, when you're radioing back, they know what you're talking about. Um, now, this is more uh, if for the two copies. This is more if you are there for a longer duration. So let's say that we go out in the mountains, right? And we set up a patrol base or you could even have an alpha alpha. You could have a rally point and then you could have an OP on top of that. Once again, we'll get into the weeds of this. I realize for people that don't know, it'd be overwhelming. Uh, there is a lot to go into it. There's a lot to talk about it. Uh, but more or less, you're gonna do two copies of this so you can give another copy, send that up to your command team. So if you have to relay back and you're telling them or asking permission to engage or just letting them know and giving a sit rep of exactly what's happening, then they know what you're talking about, where it is. Also going to have your grid on here, northeast, this exact uh, direction, this distance. So when someone's looking at a map, right, they know where you're at, and then they can do 300 meters, 310 degrees, but your command knows exactly where the enemy is and at what time stamp they were there. And so a big thing with reconnaissance, a big thing with LPOPs, you are literally just there for observation. Your job is observation. So you want to be sending back as clear and concise intel as you possibly can, which doesn't always happen. No, 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 not thing you need to take into consideration and I don't think enough people talk about this and I really think this is important like I want to stress this so hard of how important this is shit is going to go wrong no say it ain't so things are not 
going to go as planned. What? Pretty much ever. So you want to plan, you want to over plan, you want to have a plan B, you want to have a plan C because shit's going to go wrong. It's inevitable. You cannot take into consideration every single variable that's out there. It's called METTC for a reason because, and God, I keep going over acronyms of now I'm going to have to talk about that. Now I'm going to have to talk what, about that. What does now that mean? That. All right. So I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, Met TC, or I could even write it down. We'll write it down in a second. I'll, I'll back into range cards. So right here, you are going to have your numbers. So what you want to do is you are going to choose what number is what identifying thing. So first off, usually you're going to have your left and right limits. So right here, uh, this is probably going to be your left limit. Let's say that you have a bushel of trees. A bushel of trees. A bushel of trees. A bushel of trees. So this will be my left limit. I cannot shoot any farther than this. Either I have teammates over here, we're set up on a screen line and it's not safe for me to shoot that far to my teammates or there's something obstructing it. My left limit is going to be my number one. So right here, you're gonna put Number one, you're gonna give the exact directions. We start filling out a range card. Wanna grab your handy dandy compass, find out where north is. Just like with land navigation, if you've watched our land navigation video, the first thing you wanna do whenever you're sitting down to look through, first fucking thing, where's north? So you sit down, all right, cool. Let's say north is this way. On our range card, going to put north as this way. So no matter what, if somehow something got fucked up in a way it doesn't quite make sense, maybe the guy before you just sucks ass at drawing, which happens. That's me. And when you're relieving the guy in front of you, your, his shift is over, he gets to go rack out and sleep or eat or shit or jack off, whatever have you. <laughs> happens in the field, man. I, I, I mean, I, we're kind of against it here, right? Um, but it happens. I you need a rangefinder. You absolutely need a rangefinder. If you don't have a rangefinder, you're fucking wrong. Either you need wrong. one or someone in your immediate team needs one. Rangefinders are very important, but if you are a poor boy, we do have a product that we're going to be pumping out here soon um, that is going to give you a very, very inexpensive way to have a rangefinder on you, lightweight, Really fucking excited yeah. about that. I would say as far as she hits the fan goes or anything of the yeah, likes, no, those uh, are, this, those this are... product is going to be superior in many ways. Mm, God, it, it so, will be superior. I'm so excited to start selling yeah. those, dude. This is the rangefinder that I am personally using. By no means is this the best, and it is made by Sig. You filthy Sigger. <sighs> I am now a Sigger. All right, uh, so this is the SIG Kilo 1000, I want to say it was. Um, so, like, one of the panels broke off, so I just wrapped it. Oh, yeah, Kilo 1000, I'm retired. Uh, I wrapped it in electrical tape because uh, electrical tape. Always have electrical tape on you. That's but, good to have, um, yeah. This is a good range finder. I've enjoyed it so far. Uh, I was recommended to buy one of my sniper buddies. Sidewider Concepts, go hit him up on Instagram. Very, very knowledgeable dude. Uh, he's a sniper. I want to say he placed second for army vest sniper recently uh great dude wealth of information if you're looking for uh, sniper training or long distance training that's the guy to hit up uh, but he recommended this and i i really enjoy it appreciate him a lot um i want to say he recommended a nicer one to me recently too but we'll get into that it, works. money can only go in so many places at once you should have binos with you as well if you are doing any kind of reconnaissance if you are doing lpop if you are training for this, um, binos are very important. You wanna have something that's detached from your weapon. Having your weapon up to look at things, one, not safe at all, and two, uh, that's gonna get old really fast. Yeah. That's gonna get heavy <laughs> really fast. Sometimes you want to get observation of another team working with other guys. You know, you wanna get, get eyes on your dudes moving around and seeing if you can see them and their OPs. That's another thing as well. But having binos is very important. Uh, I would recommend something maybe a little bit smaller than this, depending on what you're doing, but it really depends on how much weight you want to carry. Yeah, this this was like a Costco two-pack, I think, way back when. It was like the Bushnell big boy, and then it had a smaller one. I'm not a fan of Bushnell at these, all. These aren't bad. 
but these were, no, I've, I've used those before. Yeah. Those are actually surprisingly clear glass. Yeah, they, they are very clear. And like, I'm not relying my life on it. Like, I'm not putting a Bushnell optic on my rifle. Exactly. Ever, but yeah. I'm not relying my life on that like I am a rifle. Yeah, you're just like, okay, I need to take a look at something. Yeah, if like it's a little fuzzy, it's a little fuzzy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so getting into range cards again. All right, so if you have your handy dandy range card here, right? So what you're gonna be going over is every single one of these numbers, um, you are going to give the direction of what direction that is from you wherever you're laying. And then your what elevation it is. Now this is probably going to be a guesstimation on your part. Um, try and do your best, use logic. You should know your elevation. Shit hits the fan though, I'm probably not using this watch because the GPS watches die pretty fast. Casio G-Shock, love Casio G-Shock, incredible watch. The batteries last like 10 years. Uh, this one lasts like a couple of weeks. Anyway, so you want your elevation, the range, so how far it is from you. Once again, uh, range finder is very important from that. What ammo type you are using. You might have different platforms that are on site for different ranges. The description of what it is that you're looking at, you have today's date, so the date that you made this range card. Dude's absolutely whack it in OPs. And every time you move locations, you're gonna have a different range card, so put the date that you started that range card. Position identification and weapon. Right here, you're going to have multiple different symbols for different weapon platforms. I will put them up on the screen, I'm not gonna draw all of them. Um, that being said, on the civilian side, and I know people are going to want to get into this, uh, especially veterans, on the civilian side, you can, in fact, have a legal civilian a crew serve weapon platform. Now, it's not going to be like what we had in the military, not by any means, but you can make it work. So, you ready then, for okay. another tangent? <sighs> Uh, it's not necessarily a tangent, but I think it's important to talk about. All right, so we have a 20 inch AR. And then what we have here, and this is our crew serve setup, is our crew serve guy is gonna rock a Claymore bag. We also sell these as well. Yeah, I realize I'm plugging my shit. Ah. <laughs> Wait, you actually train with the gear that you're selling? Yeah. No! I train with the gear I'm selling. Go, go fucking figure. <laughs> All right, so uh, our crew serve setup. We're going to have a 20 inch AR. As far as the 5.56 platform goes, 77 grain out of a 20 inch barrel is going to pack a hell of a lot more punch than a lot of people talk about. Mm. So with the Claymore bag, I have three D60s in this one bag. So with this already on the weapon and one Claymore bag, I have four D60s with 60 rounds of ammunition each. And that's on top of my already combat loadout. Now, is it as effective as having a belt fed? Is it as effective as having a cruiser? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> absolutely not. But as far as doing this on the cheap, you could absolutely build out a PSA 20 inch AR and slowly grab D60s, depending on if it's legal in your state. You're, uh, you're also wanna gonna make sure you're getting a, a heavier barrel. Um, there's a lot of different types of barrels, even with a 20 inch M16 type. Uh, make sure you get more of a thicker barrel. Uh, those pencil thin barrels, especially, uh, they're kind of the cheaper ones, like, like, like Delton or whatever. They're, they're thinner barrels and they're not gonna take as much high volume as fire as well. So something with a thicker barrel, that's gonna be able to take a higher volume of Full fire. auto rated. Full auto rated, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, just do the Jerry Michelark. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry Michelark, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Michelark? Mi Michelark, Jerry Michelark. Mich uh, fast shooty guy. Fast shooty guy. Fa fast shooty old um, guy. So another option that you can do, uh, I was gonna save this for a little bit later in the, the video, but whatever, we're here talking about it. Uh, as far as training for cruisers, right? So uh, shit hits the fan, you know, um, depending on how resilient you are, depending on how strong you are, depending on your manpower, um, who knows where you're gonna wind up, what's gonna happen. Uh, let's say you walk up upon a National Guard uh, facility that has been, you know, absolutely wiped out. Having training, or at least the, the concept of machine gun theory is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. So ways that you can actually train this legally and fairly inexpensive is airsoft. 
So we have multiple airsoft. You wanna grab that one? Yeah, I'll grab that. Uh, we have multiple airsoft belt fed systems, and with this, we can train machine gun theory. Now, with that being said, you are not gonna be able to get the range at all. You're not gonna be able to get the recoil. You're not gonna be able to get a lot of the manipulations. But if you have somebody that's experienced with the machine gun, if you have a veteran in your group, you can absolutely train with a machine gun for inexpensive and you can get the repetitions out of it. You can print out the army qualification cards and you can do a, a close range and you can go through qualifying your guys with airsoft guns and teach machine gun theory of how to walk in a target, um, how to actually, you know, when you're shooting of how to start low and kind of walk it in. There's a lot of things that you can train with airsoft. Uh, this one is not full weight. That one is a full weight M60. Absolutely love this thing. Now, that being said, we spent a little bit more money on that. A little pricey, yeah. Um, it was a little pricey uh, because it's full weight and the manipulations are actually very, very similar to an actual M60. It's got the I safety love that. and everything. Uh, it's, it's got, it, it is very similar to an actual M60. I don't have uh, experiences so with as it. So yeah. <laughs> as far as both actions go, you can pick up a inexpensive airsoft gun and you can train bolt action and you can train for in being in an op and you can do almost all of your op training with airsoft and you can even have guys attack you and you can have two different split up due to two different teams have two different teams you can have different mission sets and both of those teams have overlapping missions so at a certain point you guys have overlapping objectives and you both have to actually get into a firefight. Um, and you can work through, you know, all of the same, you can work through a lot of logistics, training. Uh, there's so much that you can do with Airsoft that is not talked about by enough people. Um, so with this, I built this out to be as close to my AR currently as possible. Uh, you can find a lot of these airsoft knockoff parts online for very inexpensive. And the, the reason of this, and I know guys talk trash on airsoft a lot, and they do, but yeah, this is set up very similar to how I have my AR set up, right? So when I'm training, everything is where I keep my AR. So I'm still getting that weapon familiarity. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, why don't you use Sims? Or, oh, why don't you train with paintball? Well, paintball. that costs a hell of a lot more money. Sims, so simulation rounds, uh, you swap out the bolt yeah. on your AR-15, and now you're actually shooting cartridges, and they, they fucking hurt. I have, uh, One of my uh, first sergeants had to have one surgically removed from his face. Sims are amazing. They're incredible training. They really are. Uh, you're actually getting the recoil. You're getting the manipulations, but they're next to impossible to get and they're so fucking expensive so next best thing is airsoft uh this is the kwa i want to say this is the ronin m4 i think no uh km4 sr7 i like this uh this airsoft gun but there is another one that we have that i like more um yeah. that's just usually my go-to uh another thing with these two right uh people are asking you know building their ars they're not old enough to buy a lower because you have to be a certain age to buy a lower. Oh, good talking point. So good talking we're point. We're probably gonna make a whole video on this. I mean, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, um, you can you can buy a real EOTech or a real sight or whatever it is you want to run on your future rifle because you might not be old enough to buy an AR, but you can buy an airsoft gun or maybe you can have a relative buy you an airsoft gun off the internet or something if you don't have a credit card, right? So you can accumulate actual gear like lights and lasers and optics and. Uh, all kind of grips, slings. You can accumulate those things, put it on your airsoft gun, train with your airsoft gun, just go play airsoft in the backyard with your friends. You're gonna get really familiar with that gear. And once you're old enough to buy an AR-15, yeah, once you're old enough to actually go buy your AR, is it, oh, okay. Once you're old enough to go buy your AR, you can just take everything you had on your airsoft gun, swap it on, and you're ready to go because you've already been tra you've already been training with that for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll do a whole video on that. No, we absolutely will. Yeah. Um, so speaking of, uh, this is one of the Somo gear. 
um, lasers. This is technically airsoft, but it's full power. Um, so I've actually trained with night vision and airsoft. And so far, so far this thing has been banging. Now I cannot recommend it yet. I do not have enough training with it yet. I've uh, been using it on my airsoft rifle. I've been using it on my actual rifle. So far um, for a full power laser that's 300 bucks, this thing is banging. Um, is but, IR? huh? You say as IR? Yeah. I might need to get one. Um, I'm gonna get one. So far they're amazing, but I can't recommend it yet, so hold off. Yeah, I definitely wanna try it out so I could, you know, Put in my two cents. All this is uh, make sure that you have a notebook on you. Um, I would not recommend taking something like this to the field. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the right in the rain notebooks that we sell with the land nav kits. Uh, I would recommend those over anything. Which rig do I have? Do I have in that one? Uh, I have so many pieces of kit now to show that I don't know where what's where. There it is. Uh, something like this. Uh, a small little right in the rain notebook that you can just keep notes of, you know, this vehicle passed this junction at this time. I noticed this identifier, this identifier, the plate number was this, 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 and this. Um, that's something that you wanna be able to do is keep that on you. Also, right in the rain, pens and pencils. Oh my God, pencils. Not mechanical pencils, fuck mechanical pencils. No, you want something that you can sharpen in the field if you break it in half. Fucking hate mechanical. You just have all the little leads, and then you're constantly like clicking it. Ah, Dude, broke again. Click, mechanical click, click, click. pencils ah, broke again. are the worst for Ooh. military operations. Dude, especially when you're like sitting there, like if you like remember like from high school, and someone's like making like the really screechy, scratchy noise with mm -hmm. the mechanical, pen mechanical pencil, yep. and you just want to. Yep. No. Would you please clear off this, and let's go into. Oh, we're using that. Yeah, he's the hat. Uh, let's go into Ooh. sniper hides. I've been feet away from guys jacking off. Who uses Bic for dry erase? I don't fucking know, man. That's what we had. What the fuck's wrong with you? That's what we had. So we're gonna go into setting up a LPOP uh, slash sniper hide. I do not have as much experience with sniper hides. I've never been a sniper. I haven't gone that hardcore into long range, so I'm just gonna be honest with you. Sniper hides and OPs, to my knowledge, are very, very similar. And I have little to no experience with urban. I do have experience in like security and working armed security. And I have had to do OP type shit like that, like vehicles and whatnot, and watch people from vehicles in urban settings. That would count, but um, by no means in military operations have I done anything like urban. Hear me the radio, please. Indeed. Whee! Second last. I'm editing over this and you're hearing me talk now. Yeah, affirmative. As far as setting up an OP, um, there's a few things that you want to take into consideration. So do you have somewhere that you can properly fall back? Are you in a choke point? And we're going to go into land nav uh, a little bit here. Are you on a hill? Are you on a ridge? Are you more sunk into a valley? Where do you want to set up your OP? So before you're going in to observe something, you want to do what is called map reconnaissance. So you have multiple types of reconnaissance. I'll put them up on the screen now. You can go ahead and screenshot that. But you have different types of uh, conducting reconnaissance. So you might do a route recon to get in there. And then you're gonna do, uh, still in the map recon, right? You're gonna be looking at where's the best places that I can sink in. That is part of OP training, is understanding that. Haven't seen our land navigation video I would go check that out because land navigation is going to be fairly important uh, as far as LPOP training goes if you are in more in a mountainous terrain. You want to go off on your rant really fast about uh, uh, being poor and uh, understanding land nav in, in uh, urban settings and whatnot? Because you were talking about that. that oh, day. so what I was talking about more is, uh, and this is in reference to uh, past videos, um, while you're doing your PT, going for trail runs, actually learning your AO and learning the environment that you are in and understanding the lay of the land. That way, land nav isn't as big of a problem for you because you already know the land and you already know where you're going. You already can find landmarks and the position of mountains and trees and just understand where you're at just by train association and already have been there. Uh, I think that's a really big thing that a lot of people forget. Uh, just go outside and learn as much about your environment as possible and where you live. 
it's going to give you an upper hand, that home field advantage. If you ever need to, uh, you know, do any operations, you already know the land. You don't have to spend time with a map and everything because you, you know what you're doing. Uh, that's just one thing to take into consideration. And that's something that costs zero dollars and is free exercise. So that's two birds with one stone. He's drawing stuff. Okay, so let's uh, let's go over like a little mock mission here. All right, so what this is going to be classified as is a screen line. It's going to be our plan A. This is gonna be the first thing that we're gonna plan out. So we are going to infill into our alpha alpha. So this is our assembly area. Um, after this, you could even have another place, maybe, you know, a mile out. And that's going to be your, oh, I'm thinking Jim. <laughs> PR. <laughs> <laughs> Your personal record, it goes here. <laughs> okay, so um, while you're infilling, right, um, you might have one, two, three, hell, if you want to even do more than that, you're going to set up RPs. So RPs are rally points. Um, these are notifiable areas that everyone knows. And so if anything goes wrong with this mission, Phil, right now, you are not able to reconnect. Everybody just needs to turn off comms and get the fuck out of there. Something went wrong, which happens. Mm -hmm. And we've trained that as well of just exfil, exfil, exfil. We need to fucking leave now. Yeah. Pack right? up so, everything and just get out uh, of there. That's another thing. When you're in OPs, you're in these little positions, you are out of your pack. You reach in your pack. You grab one thing that you need. Whatever you don't need goes right back in your fucking pack. Yep. You need to be able to exfil quick, fast, in a hurry. You, you do not live there, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're just hanging out, you're visiting. You are, you are couch surfing at, at best. I would recommend having some sort of tally, some type of identifier with, uh, for all of your guys that you can check off that, oh, this person was here. Maybe every single person has a single letter. They carve that into a tree and then someone comes up on it and they have no idea what the fuck that means. Um, something like that, or maybe you guys all keep little charms and you keep that on a fucking tree. It doesn't Lucky matter. Charms. Something. Go with something of identifying that other people were there. So you get to that rally point. Maybe you wait a half hour. Your SOP. Another acronym I haven't explained. Uh, SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Everyone should have SOPs for damn near everything, just so everybody's on the same playing field. Mm -hmm. So once again, you get to your RP. Your SOP is to do x and you wait there for a half hour you didn't meet anyone okay you fuck off into the next rally point okay cool you wait there for a half hour no one's there next rally point or you say fuck the rally points all together and you just shove off home also one thing when you're doing that as far as shit hits the fan tracking exists people can track you mm -hmm. so take that into consideration of your exfil and not just be lining it straight back to your base so somebody can just immediately follow you uh if it gets that bad Follow rivers. Dude, just straight up, like, if it if your life depends on it, just walk a river, man. It is very hard to track someone walking through a river. River bed, creek bed, anything like that. Very hard to track. Yeah. So, going off on another tangent, Jesus Christ. I'm so, I'm so bad at tangents, man. You guys should see my land nav class. It's in person. It's, it's impressive. Actually, in my classes, really. You go, oh, yeah, this will be a half hour class. Two hours later. <laughs> Two hours later, everyone's just asleep. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody's falling. No, I'd, I'd make them do push-ups. <laughs> oh, are you sleeping? Push-ups. Push. Get the blood flowing, you know? Push. From our RP, you're going to our Alpha Alpha. We might have like a couple of people that we leave here and they're going to be our command element in the field. Or we're just going to stash our longer range packs. Maybe our infill was a day, two days, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we have our larger packs on. Um, so one of our SOPs is having two packs with us. So we'll have a, a small light pack that is, you know, very, very um, minimalist and we can just have the essentials for our OP trainings. Um, so drop our large packs here, anything not essential. And we have, we set up as our alpha alpha and that's essentially our in the field operating base. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start kicking out teams into OPs to watch your objective. So in a screen line, you want to get different angles. So you're getting a better vantage point 
uh, on the, that objective. So people are seeing different angles because just one OP, you know, I mean, think of this of, of video games or, or what have you, enter blank here. Just looking at something directly, you are only getting one picture. To be able to get as much intel as you can, you want to be able to see multiple angles of that picture, and that's why we do screen lines. So once we get into these uh, OPs, right, um, something that you need to take in consideration when you're setting it up, setting up an OP, is your infill route, right? So this guy doesn't want to beeline it straight to here. Depending on your terrain, your terrain matters a lot. But we're assuming right now that everyone's in a ridge line, and that this is sunk down in a valley or a depression. Um, so we're going to infill as much as we can using the foliage as cover and we're trying to infill away from that objective so that we're not seen and then sneak in to a reasonable spot um, and we're going to set up our OPs. So something to take in consideration from our OPs and I think I went over it in our OP portion of the video um, but something to take in consideration from the OPs is when you're building up your OP when you're trying to dig in dirt, when you're trying to put in foliage to disguise yourself, you want to take from behind your OP as much as possible. Never take in front of your OP. You're going to disturb dirt, you're going to disturb moss, you're going to disturb all this stuff that is going to give away your position, potentially. We do not want to give away our position. You know, that the reason that we're here is we're being sneaky, we're being stealthy. We don't want them to know that we're there. Another thing that we have to take in consideration now in fifth generational warfare. Oh, are we already in the fifth generation? Is it fourth now? I think it's fifth. Is it? I don't know. What are next, we going off Next of? gen <laughs> warfare. Current uh, gen. Taking consideration drones. Wool is a godsend. This is one of the most important pieces of tools that we have, I would say, it's probably one of the most important pieces that you can have. With a wool blanket, it is actually fairly easy to hide yourself from thermal detection. Being said, if you are moving, your body is going to heat up more, you're gonna give off more of a heat signature. But if you're trying to hide from a thermal drone, putting a wool blanket over you and then a tarp over that that is going to hide your position as long as your heart rate is down, you're fairly chill. You're not like in your OP doing push-ups or some shit like that. Trying to stay warm. <laughs> Trying to stay warm. Wool hats, wool gloves. I'm wearing a wool hat right now. Absolutely love wool. Uh, wool socks I'm wearing right now too. Wool socks. I think socks. my wool gloves, I think they're my pack over there. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah. Wool is huge. I highly recommend wool, uh, especially if you're sitting on an OP and you're in somewhere like the Pacific Northwest or somewhere that's cold. Uh, when wool gets wet, it still is going to retain its warmth. That is the reason that... Uh, okay, these, uh, these hand warmers that we sell, that is the reason that we have them wool lined. I know there's other companies that make hand warmers. My knowledge, we're the only ones that make them with wool. When your hands are wet, if this gets wet, what have you, this is going to retain its warmth. Whereas, you know, other things like cotton is not. As far as it goes for us poor boys, right? It might be tempting to get cheap cotton, cheap materials. Wool is one thing. If you invest money in good clothing and good kit, like wool, it's gonna last longer and you're gonna save money in the long run as long as you take care of those products. As long as you're taking care of them and not just leaving them out to get all moldy. So another thing that I put in okay. here, take into consideration is uh, hunting absolutely counts. As far as OP, yes. OP LP training, mm -hmm. hunting is arguably one of the best trainings that you can do. Yeah. It, it seriously is. So for all my hunters out there, absolutely, yes. Um, because you guys have the vast majority of these principles down already. Mm -hmm. Already have the noise discipline. You guys already are, are fully into hiding where you're at and you mm -hmm. bring out there and bringing the, the, the sniper hides and whatnot and the little pop-up tents and all that. And, and you guys, depending on how you hunt, like the guys that are going out there and they're, they're sitting in their, their, yeah. their hide for you know days on end and mm -hmm. they're, they're making sure they're not making too much noise. They're not making too much smell. Mm -hmm. There was a, a story I was talking to somebody about recently um, that they were hunting and a dude fucking lights up a cigar and he, he st straight up just grabbed that shit, ripped it in half, fucking took his shovel, buried it in the ground and fucking buried yeah, it. Trying animals to keep, are going to smell that. They're going to smell that. Animals. But I would say that smell is actually 
more important than listening. Yeah. I realize that might sound kind of weird. We were on a ruck recently and I've trained this so many times, but it was just another one of those things that like it, it popped in my head of like, wow, that really fucking travels. Mm -hmm. On a six miler and we were coming back to our vehicles and uh, we were at kind of, we parked sort of near a park, 2100 or so. Yeah. And we had to have been five, 600 feet off and we smelled weed. It just hit us like a brick. Dude, dude it's like, like hitting I'm a brick wall. so fucking strong. Cigarettes. So strong. And weed. And, and we kept walking. Far. And it was by our vehicles, yeah. which was on the other side of a river. Yeah. And and we'd smelt that weed. On the from, other side of a bridge. <laughs> yeah, from the other side of a fucking, like, dude, that shit fucking travels. Yeah. So if you have a tobacco addiction, uh, if you have, like, if you're really all about marijuana, I would highly take into consideration, you know, being able to not do that mm -hmm. if, if you're doing any sort of training yeah. like this. If you really, really need that nicotine, hell, man, dip. Or, or, or Zin. something. Zin pouches. Yeah. You can't really uh, smell like, a Zin pouch. I mean. But like you need to take in consideration your smell. Food that you're eating. Mm -hmm. Are you are you trying to cook up all these uh, all these fancy yep. mountain backpacking meals and whatnot? Because that's going to smell. And people are going to smell that. And then you're going to have to take a shit. And it's going to smell disgusting. And people are going to smell that. Eat. Laura bars. Eat Laura bars. Stuff Absolutely. like that. Candy bars. I mean, if you're sitting in an OP, you're just going to have to suffer with cold food. You're just gonna have to suffer. Banana. Banana. Oh yeah. Um, so that's another thing to take into consideration. Um, if you're in an LPOP and you have to take a shit and there's just nothing you can do about it. Um, usually if you're in like a sniper hide or an OP where you know, you're like really up close and personal and you have to be in the prone the entire time, which I've done that before, prone, and you're not, you're in a position that you just can't get out of the prone for whatever reason. Um, you're straight up going to have to low crawl somewhere, roll on your side, and piss away from the OP. The best cover that you're possibly ever going to have is dirt, mm -hmm. earth. So what you wanna do is, you know, straight up style, start fucking digging trenches, man, just dig down. Because you want, once bullets start flying, you, you wanna be behind dirt, I mm -hmm. promise you. Uh, a, a trench is a hell of a lot harder to get a bullet into than let's say you're behind a tree or something like that, yeah. right? Uh, trees are pretty easy to flank. N trees usually aren't the best cover, uh, especially, uh, what do they call it? Uh, tree cancer. When tree like, cancer. Yeah, when you're like poking out from a tree and like you can easily see your uh, your silhouette. Mm -hmm. Which earth, overall, uh, like if you ever need to get behind cover, dirt. So do you probably have some sort of uh, lower end uh, night vision devices, which are great. They're great for scanning. One thing you want to take into consideration is some of these have IR built into them. And if you have a night vision device that has full-time IR that you can't turn off, uh, you want to be aware of that because other people with night vision are going to see that IR and they're going to know right where you're at. So just like with light discipline, IR discipline is just as important and something you want to take consideration. Now these little, uh, these cameras here, I think this is called like the Night Owl. It's like a $200 Amazon special. It takes AA batteries and you could take pictures and videos with it. A great tool if you want to take pictures of your objective, if you want to take a video of your objective, it's great. Just keep in mind, um, some of them have IR. Make sure you get one that doesn't have IR. Yours doesn't have an IR. Uh, micro has out in the field. Uh, okay. Cause it's, it's currently being used. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great tool. Uh, being able to take pictures with night vision or thermals uh, is a huge plus. Digital night vision is getting there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's there yet. Cities, and there is a lot more ambient light. Uh, the Psyonix is going to work. The digital ones, they need so much more ambient light rather than a traditional analog. They just don't work out in the mountains. They really, 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 really don't. So if you're somewhere that has a lot more ambient light, um, a night vision camera might actually be an option for you. It might work. Um, it's, it's not a, a terrible option. We've trained with them quite a bit. Um, we've, uh, th this OP actually we have a guy and all he has is my Psyonix camera and you know, he can see a little bit. It's, it's better than having absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. but by no means is that like an option that I would recommend. Um, now we're gonna do another video about this, uh, so I'm not gonna get into this too much, but this is a PVS 14. And then what I have here is a times 3.5 magnifier that is specifically designed for the PVS 14. 
So what I can do in a static position is I can pop off the cap that I already have. I can take this, affix it on, and now I have a night vision device that I was using on my head. Um, and now I have a magnification to my night vision. So as far as OP trainings go, um, this is not a bad option at all. Uh, especially with the PBS 14s, if uh, you're running like a, a bridge setup, uh, what you can do is you can take off one of those PBS 14s, right? And then you're still combat effective with one mounted to your helmet, and then you can give another give another PBS 14 to someone else and give them a magnifier. So one thing that you wanna take in consideration when you're operating with a team, right? On the civilian side is that not everyone is going to have the same amount of funds. So if you are a guy that has been into the game a little bit longer, take into consideration buying spare things for you that you can then loan out to other people. What we have here is, and we are gonna be selling these soon as well, a mini FLIR. So what you can do with this is you have a Google Android phone that has been upgraded so it is fully secure and offline. And then you have your connector right here and you will have a small FLIR device. So what you can do with this, now this being said, in no way is this the best option. It's a poor option. This is a poor it's option. A poor series after all. So you can have thermals if you are poor as fuck. This is going to give you the, the ability to have thermal capabilities for cheap. So what you do, you take this, you plug it in right here. You take this, you plug it into your phone. And what you can do is while you're in your OP, and this has the uh, the camera on it right here. So you can be under a wool blanket with your little TV screen, and you can poke your, your thermal up and look around for heat signatures. Now, we have tested this quite a bit. You are not going to get the highest resolution video from this at all, but it will give you heat signatures, and we've tested it up to 500 feet. By no means is this like the best option ever, but it's absolutely an option. It does give heat signatures. So you're going to be able to see that something is there. You're going to be able to see an outline of a human for hundreds of feet. So I, I would honestly say that this is a viable option. Yeah, we've we've yeah, trained totally. it. We've used it. This is awesome. And I don't understand how no one's talked about this yet. Well, uh, I'll put up the prices for everything that I purchased right here. Uh, Hollow Sun just dropped a new weapon mounted thermal device that I am, <laughs> I, I am getting Gib. my hands on. Gib. Like the, yeah. I, I am I'm getting one. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm getting my hands on that. Yeah. That is a very, very cool device. But for the poor boys, this is an option to have thermals. If you have an old Android that's sitting around, they make these for iOS and also Android devices. Very, very cool. My poor boys, it might be tempting to buy a cheaper jacket. Get yourself a really nice Gore-Tex waterproof jacket, especially if you live in an area where it just pisses on you constantly. Uh, spend hours, days in the rain, and you take this off and you're still dry. Oh, you know what? Here, hold on. You keep talking. Anyway, as I was saying, a jacket like this provides great camouflage. Keeps you dry, keeps you warm, keep you protected from the elements. And it's stylish. I don't care the route that you go about to get a suppressor, but I would highly recommend getting a suppressor. Yeah. Highly. It's, it's, it's really up to you. Um, I've, I've had people shooting next to me with and without suppressors, and I prefer people next to me to have suppressors because it's kind of nice to not get my eardrums blown out. So our next video, <laughs> um, we're gonna be going into poor drills. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, if you go to the range and you only have this amount of money, what should you be doing at the range if you are a poor boy? What is the best way that you can make 
the best of the money and the time that you have allotted to you. This can be our next video coming out. If we haven't said it yet, we're on Patreon. Absolutely love you guys. Love the support. We would not be able to do it without you. We actually have a Patreon only video that is going to be coming up soon. Uh, that's going to be on YouTube and we'll send you guys the link for that. We have an entire build that we did out specifically for the Patreon guys. We'll probably release it for everybody else down the road, but for, for the time being, that's for Patreon only. Yep. As far as the website goes, once again, we sell products, we sell gear. We have guys that are sewing around the fucking clock for you because we love you and we want you guys geared up with the best shit possible and by gum we're making it. <laughs> it's gum. American made and it's veteran made. You fucking, you sexy boys get the fuck in there. Once again, if you love us, if you support us, help us build this fucking poor empire. Join us on our the journey. Poor the poor empire. Really cool patches and stickers coming out soon. As we weren't tracking yet, we are back on Instagram. Who knows how long that's gonna last. Uh, we have a Telegram, we have a Patreon. Unfortunately, we're on Twitter. Um, I will put all the links for that in this video. So if you wanna go follow us on other places, by all means do that, or don't. I don't know, go fuck yourself. That's an option. Um, go to the gym, love you guys. I realize this has been a, 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 an interesting video, but uh, once again, this was an intro to LPOPs. I do not have the time or mental strength uh, slash knowledge to tell you everything about LPOPs. So uh, as far as the handbooks that we recommended, right? Go go learn up, go sit down, start, start you know, taking notes, uh, highlighting shit, learn from those books. It's a great way to learn. We should probably go check on our guys that have been sitting on the OP this whole time. All right, uh, love you guys. They're I don't think we got anything else for you. We got anything else? They're probably dead. They're probably dead. All right, it's been real. Uh, until next time. Wow, we are really good at <laughs> so as a as as um, professional retards. As a professional retard, go to the fucking gym, you lazy piece of Dude's absolutely whack it in the OPs. And you both have have <clears throat> have have. Have have. Actually, so no BS, uh, something Huck and I used to do, and I highly recommend this if, uh, if you're having like a lazy day, right, and, and you're at home and you just want to play video games, right, um, put that video game on a higher difficulty, and then every single time you die, <laughs> do push-ups. <laughs> every time, what would we do, like five for every death, I think it was? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, every time you die when you're playing a video you're game, right, Donkey Kong just, Country, just, start, just start knocking them out. It is a great way to have fun with a lot of guys and, and get a little fitness in, right? Right? Uh, yeah. and, and you can you can switch it up. You don't have to just do push-ups. We enjoy doing push-ups because I want a fucking gorilla chest, right? I don't... <laughs> that's too intimidating. <laughs> you can't do that here. Oh, that's right. So we're probably going to get kicked out of our gym because we were doing fucking monkey shit before yeah, we set. Yeah. But I, uh, oh, no. It's not the first time. One, a, one of the gym staff watches our videos, so <laughs> hope yeah. he doesn't see that. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. I don't know. Maybe he, he probably won't make it this long. It's kind of a... That's a long fucking very video. very niche video that not. Well, we ha we've had a lot of people ask for like, hey, like, don't stop doing long form videos. I like it. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, I like I love long form videos. I really do because I can keep coming back to it, right? And it's like, oh, I only got time to watch half hour of this now. Yeah. Okay, I'll come back to it and I'll watch the half hour later. Well, okay, I, I got ten minutes to, and I just yeah. You, I, I love doing that. You shit. have time for a sports ball game? You could watch a sports ball game, or you could watch a a superhero movie, but you don't have time to watch. Uh, an hour and a half Sports ball. informational video. I mean, it doesn't have to be our videos, but any informational video. You know, honestly, I would say that was uh, that was one of my biggest issues when I was like, you find a new YouTube channel, right? And it's like, oh, they have like three episodes, and it's like, I, I know it's like a really good YouTube channel too, and you're just like, all right, I'll watch all three of these and subscribe and just wait patiently. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, all right. Uh, I've done that so many times. Give, give, give more, yeah. give more, more content. I like what I let you. I like you're, you're you. doing give, good. I subscribe to give, give more. Give more. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we are really good. <laughs> so that's what I said. It has to be its own video. <laughs> Huck, would you agree that some of our best stories are from suffering together? Like the, the last OP training. Dude, we got so many good stories out of that one. <laughs>
Oh, dude's absolutely whack it in OPs. Why? Fucking hell, man. Like, what the fuck? I've, I've been feet away from guys jacking off. I mean, me too, but not in that same state. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, dude, like, uh, it's same in the back of, uh, like, trucks and shit like that. Oh, come on, in the truck? Uh, dude, you're out there for, like, you know, a month, two months. Just go, like, go, go to the bathroom. I, you have to take a dump. I, yeah, I know. But like, it's, it's, it's not that hard. It fucking, dude, I remember there is one story. I realize we're going off tangent. There's, uh, <laughs> there's one time we were, uh, we were at Railhead, right? <laughs> Head. So, well, that's what it's called. Uh, so we're at Railhead, so basically that means that we're taking all of our trucks and we're putting them on a train because... I like trains. I like trains. Yeah, Choo-choo! We're, we're pro trains. We are pro trains. Um, so we're taking all our trucks and we're putting them on the train, right? And uh, so it's because we're going to uh, California to train. Okay. Um, train. <laughs> um, and obviously, like, driving tanks and, and all that shit to California, that's a lot of fucking gas. So they put them on a train. Yeah. Um, so we're sitting in the back of this fucking truck, right? And it's just me and this dude. And we're waiting for, uh, so we're, we're like farther up on the train. So we're just sitting in the fucking truck for like an hour waiting for the rest of the guys to infill the train. And I'm sitting there and I'm on the phone with, I don't know, it was like, uh, it was like some, something about dental or something like that. And he's up in the gunner's hole and all I hear is just, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm right here. And he's just like, <laughs> like, like, dude, it's midday. The truck's not running. I can hear you. <laughs> All of a sudden, you just get hit by some bird scat. You're like, okay, let's get back into this. I just forgot because I'm retarded. Oh. <laughs> as as uh, the, back into what we're talking wow. about. Wow. Tangents. Good lord. Do these not uh, emit IR? I heard from someone that these do emit IR for the. Uh, I mean, it, I don't see how it wouldn't. Yeah, so isn't that something to take into consideration if someone else has night vision? Yeah, but I'm not range finding at night. No one's using, no one's using night vision at night. That is like or a day. At day, yeah. No one's using night vision at day. Still, yes, that is something. I mean, to you take. might you might have something lit by moon rock or yes, moonlight. that is technically something to take in consideration. Yeah. But I would say that's the least of my concerns. It's kind of like uh, people using thermals during the day. It's just yes, it is possible, um, unfathomably unlikely. Uh, just. So fucking unlikely. Anyway, oh my god, I'm so bad at keeping on top. No, I, I messed you up. I'm here. both of us. That, that was my fault that time. Fuck. <laughs> okay, actually, you know what? No. While we're on this topic, can you grab me your ADHD? God, let me just do that again. No one's gonna have like generals and 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 <laughs> first sergeants and maybe if, if you're in like shit hits the fan and it's been going for a while and you're in a militia and somehow you downloaded this and you have a, a steam power generator and you're watching PNW Gorillas LP OP video one year into the apocalypse trying to learn something. <laughs> well, you would you would watch this video now. And then you would have the information for later. Well, I'm saying like you have it like pre-downloaded and you're like trying to watch it again. Like, I've, oh, I've fuck. done that with YouTube videos. I have YouTube videos downloaded. Uh, actually, oh God, here's another tangent. I do have a tablet that uh, that I keep a lot of information on. Yep. <laughs> um, and it's st stashed away in a Faraday cage. Uh, so I'll have, I have a tablet with just various information, um, various like music videos and, and songs and entertainment shit, movies, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. But yeah. once again, we're going off on fucking tangents because we're so good at that. <laughs> All right, so um, would you realize that on YouTube, I'm no longer allowed. <laughs> no longer, no longer, no longer. Get off of YouTube. Don't watch, no, don't go watch one of our other fucking videos. Just press pause. Go to the, you know what? Just drop down and start doing fucking push-ups. Why are you not doing fucking push-ups while watching this video the entire way fucking through?